Hello folks, Jason Christman, JC's Bees, your Central Ohio beekeeper. Today I thought with the snow on the ground and it being cold, but yet spring, just around the corner, we would discuss swarms and swarm traps. Had a fellow last week ask how he could capture swarms that were not his. So he wants to catch either somebody else's bees, feral bees, or wild bees, whichever you would like to consider. Um, so I'd like to, I'd like to enlighten everybody. So very first, what is a swarm of bees and what does that look like? Bees swarm naturally. Imagine a cavity in a tree and it has a colony of bees in it. Um, the queen, she's doing her job. She's laying eggs daily, two to 3,000 eggs a day. And about 24 days later, those bees start to emerge. Now that cavity you got to picture in the tree is not getting any bigger. It's the same size all the time. Well, as you can imagine now that there's two to 3,000 eggs starting to hatch or emerge from the comb, that cavity is starting to fill up. And that is why bees naturally swarm. What will happen is the queen will turn one of those eggs into a queen cell, or the workers may do that. And half of the colony, including the active queen, will fly away. And they will usually find a tree, a shrub, um, sometimes a porch swing, um, a mailbox, anything like that to cluster on and they will stay clustered there until the scout bees that are flying out of that cluster going to look for a new place to make home return and say, hey, I think I found a cavity that will work just fine for us. It ain't rain. It's bees, people. Yeah, let's see what we got here. It's a pretty nice swarm. All the way down through the tree limbs here. Looks like the bees are in the process of climbing up. So that's why bees swarm and how it all takes place. So now let's discuss swarm traps. Swarm traps are pretty much boxes put together by beekeepers with some different smells for attractant to draw scout bees. Now let me explain what a scout bee is. Why these bees are clustered in this swarm hanging from a tree limb or a shrub, whatever it may be. There's bees constantly flying in and out. And those are your scout bees. Scout bees are doing their job. They're going out and look and scouting for a place to move, to call home, a new cavity, if you will. And when one of those bees returns and says, hey, I think I found it, then the whole swarm will up and leave. Um, I've actually gotten swarm calls and from people and I went to remove the swarm and by the time I got there, the whole swarm up and flew away. Well, that's what happened. One of the scout bees had returned and said, hey, I found a home and everybody left before I got there to remove the swarm. So that can happen. It's very common, actually. Um, sometimes they can hang there for two or three days. It, it really just depends on how quick the scout bees find that new cavity. So these swarm traps um, can be of various sizes. Um, a lot of people believe they have to be of a 10 frame deep box size. Now, I find that a little cumbersome to hang up in a tree and try to work with when it's full of bees. So I prefer a five frame nuke, a deep nuke. Um, and that works rather well for me. Um, there's some people that say though, um, the bigger the box, the bigger the swarm. And that may be true, but it doesn't necessarily mean if you have a big box that small swarms are gonna fly by it because they could still take residency in that hive. And um, so don't think by setting up a large box, you're only gonna catch large swarms. You're probably only really making it harder to handle the big box um, full of bees once you go to transport it back to your bee yard. So that's a little bit of insight there on swarm traps. Um, some of the different attractants added to these um, boxes um, could be things such as um, footprint pheromones, which are easily found on used beekeeping equipment or a used box, a used bottom board. Something that the bees have traveled back and forth a lot on. Maybe they've put some propolis um, on the walls. Um, that's a good attractant. 
Another good attractant is to take some old brood comb if you're an experienced beekeeper and maybe rub that on the inside of the box or, or melt it down and then pour it on the inside of the box. Um, a lot of people believe just having old brood comb and frames inside of the box can help encourage um, a swarm to move in and I believe that's probably true. Either way, the same smell is within the box. Um, another attractant that people like to use is lemongrass oil. And what they'll do is they'll take and put that on a cotton swab, uh, maybe a Q-tip, and they'll rub it around inside the box, and then they'll lay the cotton swab or Q-tip within the box before they close it up. Now, one thing I found that I think helps extend um, the cotton swab from drying out is if you take it and stick it in a Ziploc baggie, but don't lock the baggie, leave it open, um, that seems to prolong the scent within the box a little bit longer than just laying the cotton swab in the open box because the elements, the air, um, the, it does dry it out. So I, I kind of recommend that you check on your traps about every 5 to maybe 12 days just to uh, maybe add some more lemongrass oil or to see if it's been occupied. Another good attractant that um, people use, and it's not always handy if you're a new beekeeper I guess but if you're an experienced beekeeper and you you raise your own queens um, what you can do is when you find a bad queen is you can pinch her and then drop her down in a bottle of rubbing alcohol or uh, maybe a um, hundred proof vodka either way put her down in some alcohol and leave her there and make that bottle or jug um, where you put your dead queens and then mash them up when they're down in the bottle. Get you a stick and reach down in there and smash them up. And what that does is it allows the alcohol to absorb all the queen pheromones. So they'll take that rubbing alcohol after it's got several queens mixed up in it. And it's all nice and juicy and looks disgusting. Um, then we'll put it on Q-tips and do about the same thing we did with the lemongrass oil. And place it inside of the colony. All of these different smells help attract scout bees and swarms. So that's a few of the different attractants used um, to attract a swarm. Now I am going to leave some swarm videos linked up here in the corner and um, that will help any of you that maybe don't have any swarm trapping experience but want to get into it. Um, my experience that I learn a lot just watching others so maybe check out some of my swarm capture videos and see if those help you. But first let's finish out this video. So you take those swarm traps and you put, you know, depending on how many frames you got, um, fill it full. And then what I usually do is I got um, a board that I hang, put on the side of my box and it's got a hole in one end. Um, I'll take that hole and I'll hang it on a tree limb and maybe take a ratchet strap and secure the box itself to a tree. Um, that works rather well for me. And there is some arguments on how high the box should be placed. Some people say it should be four to six feet some people say the higher the better i've seen i've seen pictures and i don't know why they do it people take swarm traps 30 foot up in the tree using a deer stand and i just think that's absolutely insane how are you going to get the deer stand up to your swarm box full of bees and bring it down safely seems a little bit crazy to me but i have seen boxes way the hell up in a tree and it just makes no sense to me i guess nobody's going to steal it that's for sure um so there's some highlights on swarms, why bees swarm, how to set up your swarm traps, the different attractants. So now let's talk about how you could go about capturing a swarm that isn't from your own colony. First of all, the first thing you should be doing is managing your colony so that they do not swarm. And then you're not capturing your own bees, correct? <coughs> well, here's another tip to help you capture bees that aren't yours. What I would do is I would mix up some one-to-one -one sugar syrup. And I would add some Honey Bee Healthy, maybe some lemongrass oil, something to it that has that loud smell to it that's really going to draw in the bees. Don't worry about a robbing frenzy. That's not of your concern at this time. You're trying to find where bees are. What you're going to do is you're going to mix up a few different feeders like this. And maybe you're just feeding out of pop cans. Um, keep it simple. Don't go buy some expensive feeders um, to place out to find swarms. And then um, go around to your neighbors. Go two to three miles away from your bee yard so you're guaranteed your bees aren't flying to this location. And I shouldn't say location. It should be locations because you should set up several of these feeders. Um, 
anybody's property you can get access to, I would recommend this. Um, and set these feeders up and check them every few days um, come spring. You know, it's, it's my recognition that bees don't usually swarm for me until the apple trees start to bloom. And that's about mid-May. Anywhere from mid-May to mid-June is swarm season here in central Ohio. And that's because, you know, I uh, talked about the queen starting to lay eggs and build up the brood nest and they're running out of room. Well, at the same time, the bees are bringing in nectar, which is plugging up the cells and taking away from the places for the queen to lay. So that cavity is filling up quick. And um, that's why the bees up and leave. They're out of room. So keep that in mind. Mid-May to mid-June here in central Ohio, or just keep an eye on your apple trees. When they start to bloom, you know swarm season's about to start um, happening. But before that time, what you want to do is get these feeders out and, and place them in different areas. Now, one thing I would like to say is if you're going to try this, um, where you place your feeders could end up being a place for a swarm trap. So keep that in mind. Don't put a feeder somewhere where you're worried um, kids could be around it and then you're going to set a swarm trap there. Um, but what I want you to do is check these feeders regularly and see if any of them is attracting bees. And if they are, well then you know there's honeybees in the area and that may be a good place to put a swarm trap. Now, if you check them frequently enough and you can see a good bee line of bee traffic flying in and out from the feeder, you may be able to move that feeder 50 to 100 yards one way or another if you can see which way the bee line is going. And if you're able to do that, you're going to get the swarm trap closer to where the colony is. So that could be handy too. Um, just keep in mind, like I said, where you set these feeders is initially going to be the place where your swarm trap is going to go once you see there is bees in the area. Um, obviously, if there's not bees coming to that feeder after a week, 10 days, then I would move a feeder to a different location and see if that draws any bees. Um, that would be my tip on how to attract or capture bees that are not yours. Um, years ago, um, I used to go to my parents' house and set swarm traps, and that worked out rather well for me. Um, they're about 8 to 10 miles from me, and um, a farmer in the area within about a mile and a half the way a crow flies, um, he would make splits every year early spring, and he would split 60, 80 colonies. And then he would get busy um, working his fields, getting ready to plant his uh, crops. And, he, and about that time, the bees would swarm on him. So it worked out really well for me to go to my parents' back corner of their property, hang a couple swarm traps, wait for Ed's bees to uh, up and leave and swarm, and I would capture them. It worked out really, really well. Um, it just became easier for me to raise queens and not be chasing after boxes um, to see if there was a swarm in it. So I ended up to grow my bee yard instead of capturing swarms, which I guess now um, is still a good idea. Now I think about it, you're gaining other genetics. But it was quicker for me, I guess, to grow my bee yard raising queens and making splits versus driving all around, checking swarm boxes and um, doing swarm removals. So that's another option for you. If you're thinking about doing some queen rearing, um, that's a good way to grow your numbers. And I've put together a queen rearing series. You can find that um, here on YouTube if you search JC's queen rearing series. Um, there's several videos. I broke it down step by step. So you just watch one video, follow all those steps, and when the time comes, you go to the next one. So I've made it as easy as possible to follow that series. And what I'll do is I'll link it here at the end of the video for you, for those of you who are interested. So, if you have any questions or comments about anything I said today on swarms or swarm trapping or, or anything of that sort, you can leave them down below. Um, if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to smash that thumbs up button. And if you're not a subscriber, maybe consider smashing that subscribe button down there so you can stay involved in my bee videos. Um, I try to share informational beekeeping videos um, pretty much every week. Now, now that it isn't beekeeping season, it is going to change from topic to topic a little bit just so I can um, 
keep the videos going but um, I'm gonna try as much as possible to stay on beekeeping um, as my topic there will be some 3d printing videos and and some other things but for the most part my channel here is 95 percent beekeeping um anyway thanks for watching and uh i really hope um this helped everybody out with their swarm questions and how to capture bees that are not theirs have a good week and we'll see you back here next sunday thanks for watching jc's bees folks have a good one